research and discovery. Futurists. Jack and his parents live on the east coast of England. Every now and then they come to London trying to make the most of their day out. But the reason for their regular visits beats inside Jack's little chest. We found out about Jack's condition um, when I was about 28 weeks pregnant. We came to Guy's Hospital um, where they told us, unfortunately, that he had hyperplastic left heart syndrome um, and that it was very complex and that it would involve a three-stage palliative surgery. Yeah. Um, so it was quite a shock. <laughs> After three open heart operations, Jack needs routine checkups just to make sure there have been no negative developments. Hi. Good to Here see at you. the Evelina Hi. Children's Hospital, Dr. Razavi monitors Jack using sophisticated diagnostic equipment. That's a good boy. Should we take the top off? When he puts the stickers on, it feels like um, he's putting. It feels like I'm doing nothing. I'm just relaxing. <laughs> Well, it does this, boom, 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 and then, but I don't know how it does the thing. Oh, sorry, is that all right? What's my time? Where's this all? Oh, okay. This machine uses ultrasound to make an image of the heart, painted in real time by tissue and blood reflecting the sound waves. Echocardiography can provide a wealth of helpful information giving therapists a quick look at how well a patient's cardiovascular system is functioning. It's a vital tool considering the severity of the condition. Congenital heart problems altogether affect one in about a hundred children. And heart disease in the general population, of course, is very common and is the most common cause of illness and death, certainly in the Western world. And it's becoming the most common cause of illness and death in the developing world. However useful, echocardiography and other imaging methods have their limits. Overcoming them is the goal of a European research project that this hospital participates in. The model that's on the screen at the moment is just a picture so you can see how big blood vessels are and how things are connected to each other, but it doesn't actually tell us how the heart's beating in this particular model. And we hope that if we have a model where we can input anatomical data and some data on how the heart itself is contracting, we'll be able to better tell which children's heart are going to run into trouble sooner. And also we'll be able to try some medications on a virtual model rather than just sort of trying medication on children. What we want to be able to do to, is to see what happens after a treatment, particularly if a treatment is quite difficult to give or very expensive, we want to know before we give it whether it's going to work or not. And for that, the computer models give us great versatility. They allow us to try any treatment and see what would be the results without having to really go through that in the first place, just doing it in silico on the computer. So a realistic model should integrate all the relevant medical data. But first, how do we collect it? We have different scanners that you can use to make images of the heart. What you see here is one that uses a magnetic field. What is specific about this scanner is that you can get information about the heart motion and information about the heart muscles tissue properties. And you can also image the blood flow in the heart. Medical scanners provide multiple digital images of thin slices of the heart. With the right software, it's pretty easy to assemble a three-dimensional object from a series of cross-sections stacked together. Some of the modern scanners can do that with a single press of a button. The CT scanner uses X-ray radiation to make an image of the heart. So you make projections from all different sides composing a 3D image out of all the single images. What is particular about this scanner is that you get a very high resolution, very good images of the coronary of the heart. To make the step from visualization to modeling, scans need to be interpreted by a computer. Algorithms are being developed here at Eindhoven's high-tech campus. Every heart is unique, so the program measures all its peculiarities, accurately mapping the individual patient's organ. But at this point, it's just a draft, 
not a working model. This technology allows us to only extract geometry from the images. It doesn't predict how the heart will beat in the future if you change something, if you want to predict how the heart will react, if you prescribe a treatment or if you change the blood flow in some part, then you need other models that describe the biophysics of the different parts of the heart. Only then can you predict how the heart will work after therapy or decide between different treatment options. This is where engineering lends a helping hand. The heart's basically a very efficient pump. Its geometrical map's a kind of blueprint of a complex machine. We already have the knowledge and experience of testing machines and other artificial objects in computer simulations. These techniques were used to, to analyse bridges and, and structures in the 50s and 60s and 70s and then about that time we started to have computing power that allowed us to move into automotive and aerospace and, and um, uh, aeroplane design. And what's really happened most recently is those same kind of techniques are now being applied to you know, some of the really complicated problems that we have in, in biology and physiology and medicine. The result is a virtual heart that works just like its real counterpart showing, for example, cells that don't perform well enough or allowing the study of the propagation of the electrical wave in someone's heart muscle before implanting a pacemaker. What we're achieving is the ability to, to, quite, to predict patient behaviour to therapy and to select patients based on what we see in their particular anatomy for more appropriate therapies. And I, I think that sits within a wider um, goal of moving medicine from a, a, a practice which is based on presentation and trial and error into one which is based on science where we understand what the mechanisms are. Years of research and clinical validation are still needed before a virtual heart can become a reliable prognostic tool giving new hope to those who need it the most. Children like Jack, although they're quite well as children, when they reach adulthood, they're likely to have quite a lot of difficulties and their life expectancy is much less than the general population. We are of course trying to find new ways of treating them to improve their life expectancy and this project substantially helps us along that way. The last word of course should go to Jack himself. I want to become a doctor when I grow up because it's a bit fun. You can see all other people's hearts. But it's by letting others look into his that Jack is already, aged six, making a vital contribution to the medicine of the future. <laughs>